welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, we're here bringing you all the action from the CLA Game Fair 2013. First, it's Crow on a row. This is a first for us. We've never been stalking with Crow Man, but the offer of a metal buck on his old stomping ground in the southeast of England is too good a chance to miss. Just going to go out for a wander. It's not ideal. Strong winds. Uh, we're just going to have a walk around and see if we can find something tucked up behind the wood somewhere. It'll either be a, a little spike that needs uh, culling or hopefully, well hopefully, yeah, we bump into one of these uh, metal heads, uh, but we'll see how it goes. It's late June and the crops are still low. Andy knows this ground like the back of his hand, but his friend Les enjoys a stalk and talk as much as the next man, so he joins us. It's not long before Crow spots evidence of row. That's what the row tend to do, they tend to hit the brambles and the lower leaves on hazel and hawthorn. Right. How can you tell when it's fresh? You just see whether it's, it's been broken off. These, these haven't, see these, these are new shoots, they're still on there. Oh dear, they just pick them off and just see when, it, when it's fresh and see it's all there. That's it. 30 yards further on, we spot our first buck. He's settled, enjoying the rays of the evening sun with rabbits dancing all around him. So the guys have some time to assess him. At the moment, it looks like it's, it's a half decent head, so we don't want to just shoot it, just for the sake of it. So um, we'll leave it a second and see if he turns his head so that we can see see how good it is or how bad it is. He's not a bad looking animal, but they make the decision to keep going and see what else is about. Eventually we bounce him. It's always a wonderful sight. We shouldn't have stopped really, but we did. Just wanted to make sure whether he's a good or bad animal. As it is, he wasn't, a, wasn't very good. When it comes to roe deer, I'm a bit of a softie. I like roe deer. I get as much enjoyment of walking around and looking at them as shooting them. There is evidence of row all around and we're certainly covering a lot of ground. A young buck, he's rubbing his horns up and down, his little spikes up and down it. Just in two or three places as we come along. You see where he's got up and turned around a couple of times. That's the back at one minute and he turns, she's turned around or he's turned around and the muck's up the other end so he's been here quite a while. He's been getting up and laying back down again so. Along the ridge, we come face to face with another buck, and he is not alone. Crow is not happy with the shot, so we just stand and stare. He's one that we do want to knock out. As you can see, no backstop. So uh, he's going to live to see another day, unless he presents himself a bit better in a minute. The circuit Les has taken us on has certainly cleared the cobwebs and supplied some row sightings, even if they are hundreds of metres away and, in this case, out of season. With the light dropping fast, it looks as if Andy won't be pulling the trigger tonight. But a chance meeting with a fox and some rapid response calling means he does get an injury time Charlie. And that's perfect timing, as the pults will be arriving in a few days. It didn't lock, it's going to stop because it's gone off to the left. I've nailed it and it's made me very happy. And Les, I'd sooner shoot them all day as shoot roe deer. I will shoot roe deer, but I'll get a lot of enjoyment out of shooting those things. It's a barren vixen. Uh, I've been finding quite a lot of these this year. I was talking with Roy the other day and uh, he was saying he's been seeing quite a lot of, or shooting quite a lot of uh, barren vixens. And he is really pleased with his fox. We really don't think he could have asked for a better end to the night. And now to our very own fairground attraction. It's David on the Field Sports Channel New Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Nearly 90% of responses to a Scottish Government consultation on the licensing of air guns have rejected the idea, according to an independent. Basque calls the result a resounding rejection of the proposals. On the 3rd of September, Basque Scotland will submit a petition against air gun licensing in Scotland, which has received more than 14,500 signatures already. Go to the link on the screen. A kayak fisherman from Ireland has had a close encounter with a basking shark. The fish made three attempts to swim with his kayak and angler Graham Smith only realised what it was on the third attempt. Basking sharks are harmless plankton eaters and would cause problems if hooked from a kayak. 
Animal rights organisation PETA thinks it struck a blow against the field sports community with a new film on YouTube. Teaching kids to kill is supposed to be a shocking expose of cruelty, but the youth fishing derby where it was filmed doesn't really fit the bill. Now for those of you who miss the CLA or just can't get enough of our country fairs, why not visit the East Midland Game and Country Fair on the 3rd and 4th of August? With spectacular arena displays and all the dogs, guns and fishing you can cope with, visit livingheritageshows.co.uk for all the details. Tracking point technology, the people who brought us the rifle that cannot miss, have come up with a new innovation. A rifle that cannot miss over 3,000 yards. Tracking Point has been working on it for three years and it's still in development. They expect it to cost no more than £30,000. Now, here's a taster of how the 0.00001% live in Russia. Vice.com meets Russian oligarch Sergei Veremyenko and spends quality time hog hunting and helicopter joyriding at his private estate outside Moscow. The film is a hit on YouTube with more than 2 million views in a week. And finally, a web page to enjoy this week. It's Animal Activists with Mental Disorders. Search for it on Facebook. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Well, we are here at the CLA Game Fair 2013 at Ragley Hall, where we'll be talking politics with some top ministers. We'll be handing out prizes to some hardworking students. But first, Max Hunt is going William Tell. From squelching to scorching, what a difference a year makes. We are still running for cover at Ragley Hall, but this time it's for shade and to keep the fluids up. Less walking means more talking and a chance to catch up. Our friend from the mainland, the funny foreigner Max Hunt, is over for his first CLA. But it is Fozzie the Bavarian Mountain Hound who gets all the attention. When we escape the adoring crowds, Max has a chance to check out what's on offer for bow hunters. And it's not just compound bows on show. Please let me know how many bow hunters are you actually in, in the UK? Well, that's, that's a very good question. Not that many. Um, primarily because bow hunting is illegal in the UK. We're not allowed to bow hunt at all. But what is good is uh, we have a lot of guys or a lot of customers who are getting into bow hunting and going abroad to bow hunt. So, how many? I honestly don't know, but probably no more than say a thousand. Uh, you know. Well, if yep. you could explain the different types of bow. Yeah, sure, definitely. So Graham on this end, Graham's shooting a flat bow, which is, as you can see from the handle and stuff, it's like a traditional sort of long bow, um, but it has a cutout section on it, so it's what we call an American flat bow. Probably the hardest one to shoot out of the three bows here. Not so accurate, you know. Um, but so your hunting distances will be a lot closer. The second one is a... Yeah, the second one is, is a recurve. It's a slightly faster bow for, for the actual same, if you have the same poundage or same strength bow, slightly faster, um, more accurate. Again, he's shooting off the shelf. Um, you know, but a, a nice, nice quick bow. That is not as noisy as the other one. Very true. And more powerful. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you've got the compound bow, um, which is, gives you further hunting distances if you want, more precision on accuracy and it's, generally speaking, easier to shoot. I often try to explain people at home, in Denmark I do a lot of lectures in Germany. Mm -hmm. You must tell me if you disagree on this, but okay. if you want to be a successful hunter with these three types of bow, yeah. you must practice 1,000 hours with this one, yeah. 100 with that one, yeah. and 10 with that one. Sounds about right to me, yeah. <laughs> Just to put it in context, in Denmark we have about 2,500 bow hunters who have passed the exam for bow hunting. Out of these 2,500, a couple of hundred passed the exam for the recurve bow, and I think it's about two or three who passed the exam with the longbow. That shows how difficult it actually is to become a good or precise hunter with a longbow. 
Of course, we spend a lot of time along Gunmakers Row, or should it be renamed Toys R Us? There is something for all pockets. Highland Outdoors has some fun new pellet pushers and rifles. We have the new Webley Rebel. Uh, it's available in 177 and 22. What this gun is, it's a multi pump pneumatic air gun. What you do is quite simple you open the unit, pull it all the way, pull it back. Now, if you were shooting in your garage or something like that, you only need to pump the gun once or twice. And you've got an indoor, accurate little thinking gun. But if you need extra power, you can also carry on pumping. From new stuff to old stuff, looking as good as new, and I have been saving my pennies to renovate my great-grandfather's guns. Well, this is a very exciting moment for me at the game fair because these shotguns were built for my great-grandfather in the 1890s, do you reckon? Yeah, must be. Yep. Yep. And uh, they uh, have gone in for their 100-year service, 120-year service. Mm -hmm. Graham McKinley, gunmaker from Glasgow, has done the work. Graham, they are magnificent. Are you, so you're, you're pleased? I'm pleased, yes. I'm a happy customer. Fantastic. <laughs> what did you do to them? Well, it was a complete uh, restoration. The main thing was the, the woodwork was in very poor condition. There was a few mechanical issues, but essentially, you know, the guns were in good condition and certainly well worth salvaging. Good. Which you have done. I'm worried about the word salvaging. Are you saying they weren't very well looked <laughs> no, after? No, I was saying they were more resurrected Thank than you. yes. <laughs> uh, but no, they're, they're fabulous. And you know, the Stephen Grant side lever, stunning lines, and uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful guns. You know, I'm, I'm really pleased with the outcome. I think they're. And you know, to to have had them in the family for so long, to get them back, and hopefully maybe out in the twelfth. Um, you know back out in the mirror where they should be. Perfect, thank you very much. And either legendary Crowman Crow is also at the show and is finding out what A1 decoys have up their sleeves this year and what he can get his mitts on. Double back stops from seeing you. Yeah. He can have it as a normal. So I can't twist. Absolutely. Yeah. You've, got, you've really got to look after. Mark is just starting to import and distribute this shiny new number. But when you get a bit of barley down, cut barley or, you know, yeah. rape on there, that'll reflect it. And if you put it right in the middle of the field, you get a full reflection. And you'll be able to stand in the middle of the field from one direction and they will not see you at all until you pop up and shoot. The good thing is if the pigeons don't come, I can lay outside, put it underneath, get a suntan, I can suntan under my chin then, can't I? And anything is funny. <laughs> Cuts. Reflecting your natural surroundings is designed to be the ultimate camouflage. Look out for this one in an upcoming episode of Crow How. Andy is also going to be testing a new dog box and gun box combo from Robert at Trans K9. Safety and security for your best friend and your trusty smoking stick. Across the way, Land Rover put on a real show this year for all ages. It's extreme dinky driving in a new Range Rover Sport, half car, half submarine. The world of fishing is popular as always with Howell Morgan, among others, providing crowd-stopping displays. Further inland, a young gamekeeper in the making is being recognised for his hard work. Zeiss Optics, Rivers West clothing and boots from Swillington Shooting Supplies, his prize for coming top of the class. Basically we got a manual and we had to revise all about the different deer, the biology and their nature. All six deer species. And what, uh, and, and what mark did you get in the end? I got 110 out of 110. You got the, the, the top mark? Yeah. You're impossible to beat. Yeah. You are, you are the Andy Murray of deer stalking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the generosity of these guys is giving Lewis a chance well, we of owning kits that will be the envy of his mates. They are boat. worth investing in, these kids. It's a cliche, but it's true. They are the future of our sport. It is quite expensive to get good kit. And anything we can do to support guys coming in and, and allowing them to have good product uh, so that they can enjoy their time out in the field rather than suffering their time in the field. Is, uh, is great uh, and to be able to help a, a guy like Lewis who's, who's excelled at what he's studied is uh, it's just a privilege to be able to be involved. We wanted to get involved, give someone a real good start after they finish their course and, and this is why we're here today. Lewis got full marks not just for the DSC paper, the shooting and other aspects of the course so uh, a worthy winner. Mark contacted me and said uh, would I get some dealers to maybe donate some gifts and I said well I'll tell you what why don't we do it itself? Um, and, and today, it's off his own back. We wanted to uh, help this young, or, or this college out, 
um, on, a, uh, on, on, on this prize that we've given today. Brilliant, well thank you for interesting. No problem, thank you. Back to the crowds, and they are very much here, much to the relief of the CLA Game Fair's director, Andrew Crawford, who finally has a Game Fair to talk about and not a washout. I believe it's 23 months since I first uh, got appointed as uh, the Game Fair director, so a bit of a long wait, but worth it, Good worth uh, every minute of the frustrations of, of Beaver. You just have to look around, you know, the smiles on faces, the relief that people have got the Game Fair to come to this year, uh, both from our exhibitors and our public alike. And, you know, it fills me with an enormous sense of pride that uh, we got, well, you just look around and see what we've delivered, it's fantastic. You get politics in hunting, shooting and fishing these days over at the Angling Trust. Fishing mad former MP Martin Salter is keeping Environment Minister Richard Bennion busy. We grab him to talk us through the hot topics on our agenda. Uh, some people call it the big society. I, I just want to see more backsides on riverbanks and around lakes. Uh, and uh, people, particularly from urban environments, understanding about the environment. And the Angling Trust is a prime example of an organisation that's doing that, and I want to encourage it. Fishing part of the big society, would you go as far as, say, shooting and possibly even hunting could be part of it as well? Definitely. Uh, I mean, we know what uh, shooting brings into the rural economy. It's over a billion pounds a year. Uh, but the value of what shoot managers do to the countryside benefits not just the game species they, they want to target in the season, but it's about the wildlife that they are enhancing through habitat restoration, through planting game crops which feed wildlife in the, what they call the hungry gap, farm birds between January and March. You know, this is absolutely vital. And without it, you know, our countryside will be so much poorer gets more people into the countryside as well, whether they're taking part in those sports, whether they're employed, whether they're uh, you know, working on shoots or whether they're just enjoying the countryside. So absolutely vital. And repeal? I, I've always felt that repeal is the right way to go. I think it's a ludicrous piece of legislation. It doesn't uh, benefit wildlife and it is certainly not proving itself as a law and I hope in time that we will see that. From repealing the hunt ban back to Max Hunt and he's found a guy from the States with a famous family name, Hornady. The Bullet brand is one of Max's partners. I know you came here not, not just only for the CLA and to uh, present your new products. What are you doing after the CLA show? Well, we got invited to go roe deer hunting in the UK, which I've never done before and I think will be very, very interesting. You know what's going on right now with the roe deer, don't you? I don't. It's a rut, the rut ah, season. Ah, okay. It's the most special season of the year. You know, I'm, I'm, my favorite species is the robot, but you can look forward for that. When they call the robots in, yeah. it's one of the most exciting things to do on a robot. So I think you can look forward for that. I wish we had roe deer in the United States. I've, as I've said to several people, I think that this would be a phenomenal opportunity for American hunters if we had had that species. But we have we have plenty of hunting opportunities in the United States, so I'm not going to complain like that. But I know your brothers in Texas already try to keep the, the roadblocks over there. They don't do well over there. Uh -huh. Please keep them to Europe and let the <laughs> Americans come over to us and experience Europe how it is. Well, it's been very beautiful. I've really enjoyed it. This is gorgeous. So, Steve, good luck with the hunting and keep the good on, keep on the good work. For Thank us. you very much, Max. Nice to see you again. The success of the game fair is judged by ticket sales, the enjoyment of the crowds and the amount of cash through the tills. Hunter Wellies always offers a colourful display where fashion and field sports merge. So, how does Lawrence feel the CLA 2013 has been for business? Very well, because women love Hunter Wellies. It's the women that buy the wellies and the guys have been buying bomorrows for the shooting season and the clothing side of it is pretty dead. But the wellies side is just from yesterday non-stop selling wellies. You know, the CLA, it'll be what it'll be, unfortunately. The weather's not really the best for selling stuff. And the ice cream man's been doing well, the pubs have been doing well, but sometimes they don't do very well. So, it's their turn. There you have it, much anticipated, much enjoyed, missing out on 2012 brought with it a special atmosphere at Ragley in 2013. It is, as ever, one to remember. Now, what have you lot been up to this week? Well, most of you seem to have been at the CLA Game Fair. It is Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello, Charlie. I'm just sitting here outside the pot kiln having finished filming my brand new series, Mike Robinson's Wild Kitchen, which you can see on YouTube and Facebook. Hello, Charlie. My name's Nick Rudisill, and I'm down here in Atlanta, Georgia. 
um, are actually making, right? Yeah, making burgers. And we would just put on a hog hunt. Uh, you guys have a great day. Hello, Charlie. This is sunny Northern Ireland, the 12th of July. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock in the morning. I've been called here by a farmer. It's absolutely tortured with crows and pigeons. So hopefully we've got a full of you shortly. Overnight. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Next, we're having a look at the wider world of hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. First up, let's dwell on the CLA Game Fair 2013. There are several films out on YouTube already. SRS Power got his out the day after he filmed it. Good work. And it's nice to see his style developing. No longer the long intros with the view of the dashboard. Now it's short, snappy, and there are three of them walking around the Game Fair and having a laugh. Good telly. It was great to meet Hunter's Vermin at the Game Fair. Here's his latest. Air Rifle Hunting Rabbit Hunt 35. He describes it as not a big bag after missing a few, but glad to get out a run with the rifle all the same, making him the bono of the world of hunting YouTube. Now let's look forward on the glorious 12th of August. The start of the game shooting season in the UK is just around the corner. This is a pretty film from Basque Films about the conservation and economic benefits of grouse shooting. Don't be put off by that description. It has lots of lovely grouse shooting in it too. On to fishing and Ron Southern and hooks a salmon and trout at the same time in the dusk on the river Helmsdale in Scotland. See how he gets on in this video. Last week I put the words semi-naked woman hunting into the title of hunting YouTube and guess what? It got lots of views. So here's my chance to put scantily clad woman fishing into the title of this one. This is Babs Kievsky's channel promo film and she is actually really good, although in German. Get it transcribed dear, like we do so foreigners can switch on the captions. And not not only are her fishing videos good, but she always looks amazing. Back to shooting and viewer Dragon of the East Blue recommends the slow-mo guys. I have featured them before. This is underwater shooting at 27,000 frames per second. The slow-mo guys have a whole series devoted to shooting household objects with an air pistol and some fairly poor gun safety, but rack this up to HD and play it on the big screen for stunning effect. Now here's a character. Big Squirrel Hunter is a Canadian called Nevis Walker who heads out into the after squirrels in a manner which makes you respect these little animals anew. In Snowy Headshot there's lots of tracking drama and then Nevis finally shoots one out of an oak tree. One of the best made hunting shows on YouTube, Truth About Hunting, comes to you from Primos Hunting Calls. Hardly anyone watches films in this series on YouTube, but once you have waded through nearly two minutes of pre-roll they are a great expo of different US hunting styles. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like to do pop into the weekly top eight send it in via youtube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well if you enjoyed those you may well enjoy this it's schools challenge tv's latest it's the cla game fair and the schools challenge kids are out to find out about the four major elements of a great shooting outing then doug's son david florence sets out to find out why the cpsa sporting shooter magazine and the importance of aya shotguns are keen on youngsters going shooting it really is the world's leading, most extraordinary outdoor country show. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. Well, we are back next week, and if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen, or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address into our constant contact form, and we will constantly contact you about our programme that's at 7pm every Wednesday, UK time. This has been... Field Sports Britain.